the information that we went through with uh, Pentair, okay? And, oh, you know what? Yeah, who's supposed to, you can bring it up, man. I forgot, it's on the G drive. Uh, sorry, so we have two sheets. There's back, one, one sheet, two-sided. If you look at the one that has, where it says on the bottom, it'll have 12.375 and 42.715, okay? We can start there and we'll just sort of talk about what we went over. This is, this is a value stream map, all right? This is a current state value stream map. So what we did is we walked all the way to shipping and walked the product backwards. So from shipping, obviously it comes from VAO, so from VAO it comes from the uh, machine. Before the machine, it comes from receiving, right? So we walked that, that process through. And so what you have is on your left-hand side is that you show our, our vendor and we get basically deliveries you know, once a week and how much material they bring us. And so that's an inventory item, right? Because we're sitting on it. It's money sitting there. Then from that inventory, it goes into the press and then it tells us all the specifics about what the press does. So right now, current, current state, we can make a, make a single part in 22.625 seconds. Right, because it's a two cavity tool and it's running at a 45.25 second cycle. So we're making a part every 22.625 seconds. Then if you move over, we have inventory, right? We have the raw inventory sitting there by the press. And then just before the VAO, we have another set of inventory. So we have two places of inventory in our current state. Those add up to just over, just over a day and a half, just about a day and a half, okay? Then we go into what we do for VAO. So the next step there is how we load the parts onto the, this fixture, and then we mill them, then we take the deburr, we deburr it, and then we take the part off. Okay, so that's the whole process that we have for milling off the top disc of the part. I apologize, I should have had a part up here. All right, so then after that point, it sits in inventory of VAO. So it just sits there until we build an X amount of skids. I think, uh, so X amount of parts. And we basically have 1.65 days there. Then we take an inventory and we move it over to the dock. And then it sits there. And we have 2.73 2 days there. So the total amount of days of inventory, if you if, right there at the bottom is your basically your timeline. And we have 12.375 days worth of parts, okay, of so product. And then we had 42.715 of value added work that we would consider cycle time. Okay, what, what things that are actually happening that they're paid, they want to pay for, right? So if you look at it, it's not a lot of time. So just think of how much the parts are handled by material handlers, by people getting boxes, by people, all that stuff is all Buddha. Because all we have is 42 seconds worth of time, okay? So now if you flip it over, so now you're looking at, and we'll talk about the top of the sheet here too. This is what future state, so this is what we want to do. This is where we'd want to be. What we'd want is the supplier, if you look at the top left corner again, right? We would send to our supplier twice a week when we want material. So we'd bring material in twice a week. Because then we would never hold inventory of raw material. It would be very limited. So then we'd have basically the, the little symbol that looks like backwards E's. The backwards E's are like, like going to the grocery store. How much should we have so we can just pull off the grocery store? We should never have to worry about it. It should always be on the shelf. All right? So, as you can see, we basically have no inventory. We have three days of inventory based in that whole front section. So it just goes from raw material to the press. So the press, again, the press is a cycle, right? The, the current state, future state is the same cycle. It's 22.62 seconds per part. That doesn't change. That's the same. So that's where, it, that's the value added. Then, basically we're talking about is FIFO and WIP and it just eliminating it's down to one day. Right, because that's basically saying we're making it today. Whatever we make on a 24-hour period, we move to VAO, so we're not really carrying anything at the press. I'm sorry, future state would be basically milling it right there, right? As we're coming off, we're milling it, we're just doing it right away. Okay, that would be the ideal state. Then we go into milling. As you can see, that time has changed. The total time before was basically uh, 70, uh, 20 seconds. Now it's saying in the future state we'd want to be at 14 seconds. Is that what it is? That's how much time the mill runs. That's the only value added they want to pay for is those 14 seconds. Because that's the only time that's really anything value is being added by cutting the disc out. Everything else is Buddha that's around that. Okay? 
And then, but if you see, they want 17 days worth of inventory. They want us to increase our inventory. And I think everybody knows why, right? Because when we make bad parts, we don't have anything here for them. Well, but we sort all the bad parts. But if they have spike in demands, uh, we can't keep up with it. So that's the reason why they want more inventory. So we, so that's the issue. So that basically they want 21 days of inventory, but then they want to be at 36.62 seconds of value at a time. It's it, it's really a simple part of just looking at the value added. So the, the thing is that we know what our current is, we know what our future is. Now we got to figure out how do we get there. So we got to put things in place. I mean, so that's the brainstorming. That's the fun part. Coming up with ideas, fix, changing the fixture, getting rid of all the threads except for two. We don't, why we screw it all the way down? Changing the boxes, the raw parts come in. I think 150. The raw parts 150, and we ship out 200. Why not? 150 will ship out 300, so now it's one to two instead of two and a half, one and a half. All right, so those things to cut down. Uh, how do we take off the disc without having to touch it? How do we do the cutters without having to, you know, how, what kind of cutter design can we get so we don't have to send them over to get sharpened and have downtime? All that stuff is how we get to the future state. But what it is is a guideline of where we want to get to, right? And at that point, it's not done. Then we got to figure out where to take more time out of the other. So the, if you look, it's also how many times they, on the top section, I'm sorry, I didn't explain that, but it's a production. How do we tell the press when to run? When do we tell shipping how to ship? And how does the customer tell us how to, how to ship? So that's, what, that's what's on top. And the future state is obviously a lot less, we want to pass information on without having to be electronic, without having to be physical. It would be visual, right? We just walk in, we know, oh, we got to run that, okay? It needs to be visual. So that's what they're trying to show that we want to change for. Okay? So there's a lot of, uh, a lot goes into it. So that what really the big thing came out of the meeting, even Pentair told me in the morning, all of our Buddha, all of our waste is outside the press cycle time and like the value added. Just think about it. How much the parts travel and we need to do more with the same and reduce a lot of that, a lot of that waste. We need to do more value added stuff. Because uh, the parts moving, the part oh, the doors open on the press, it drops apart. There's not much else we can do about it. It's not like we're pulling the part out by hand, and how can we automate it? It's not like how we're trimming it. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, stuff that can be done outside of the molding cycle that really saves us a lot of time. Okay. Other way to get better future state, we threw them out there, right? You throw out the creative ideas. That's how we have to be creative. Change the gating. Get rid of the disc. Can we really do it without it? Can we? Can we come up with a, a way to unscrew it and, and cut it while it's in the mold? You know, can we change the mold design? Can we change? There's a lot of other creative things that came out of it, but you start with the stuff that does not. It costs zero dollars to change packaging. It costs, you know, it costs us some money to take the mill off the the uh, fixture, but it's not that much. It's not like reinventing a you know hundred thousand dollar mold. Okay, so we got to start with. There's plenty of waste outside of the capital expenditure. Okay. I threw a lot at you. I just want to let you know this is what we did for two days with Pentair. So I want to share what went on. Okay? If we need to do more of it to understand what we're doing, especially a lot of assemblies. Lewis, I think, got a lot out of it. All of us got a lot out of it. But understanding what it all goes through and what we have to do. Okay? If you have questions or, you know, see, look at it. Um, you know, ask me while I'm here. You know, anytime. If, if anybody who was in the meeting, everybody who was in the meeting, can you raise your hand so everybody can see? All of us were in the meeting, so if you have a question about what it was, you can stop any one of us and talk about it. Okay? Okay. Any safety issues? No? All right. Thank you.